hour seven. You can see soon we're going to not be able to see all the other hours, and so I, I want to remind you of this. We're exploring Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah is not the longest book in the Old Testament. Surprisingly, Jeremiah has more words than the other books in the Bible. Most people don't know that. They think of Psalms as the longest book. But when you count the actual words, the Hebrew words, Jeremiah is the longest, but Isaiah is up there. It's huge. Uh, but Isaiah is affirmed. The message I'm sharing with you is affirmed because Jesus believed Isaiah. Uh, all of the New Testament writers, 23 of the books of the New Testament, quote Isaiah. And so God really is saying to us, you trust the Bible like I do. Uh, it describes the culture abandoned um, to their sin. Did you know the worst thing God can do to you is let you just do what you want to do? Have you ever thought about that? Everybody thinks. If I could just do anything I want to do, there's a whole chapter in the Bible written about that, Romans chapter 1. What happens to a culture that just does whatever they want to do? And that's what's happening right now in our culture. Uh, Bonnie and I were reading yesterday a uh, uh, New York Times article about a, a city where we served nine years. It, it's called, it's, a, it's an Indian uh, tribal name, it's called Kalamazoo. What an amazing name for a city. New York Times sent their reporters to Kalamazoo to go through the homeless encampments along the Kalamazoo River to check how many different forms of drugs the homeless people were taking. They offered free medical testing. And basically, the whole you can read it in New York Times. It's, it's the feature article yesterday. The whole thing said that our culture is degenerating so much that nobody takes one drug. That's what a culture that, that God says it, he has abandoned. He's allowing people to do whatever they want to do. And it's horrible. So how are we supposed to reach them? And I, immediately I thought of all the ministries I know in that area that are reaching out, that, that feed those people, that take... Uh, supplies to them, that offer shelter to them, that offer interdiction for their, their drug addictions. Consecration. That's how God wants us to reach a dying culture. And I'm looking forward to chapel today because I'm going to share with you a summary of Paul's life. Paul teaches us the lessons of how to have a life that's effective, how to have a life that, that counts for eternity. And Part of Paul's testimony is right there, that consecration, hour three. Then the, the theme of the whole Bible, the Bible is, is about God. And God reveals himself through Christ. And so the Messiah is the person who fulfills all those promises God has made. Then we looked at God's wrath on the earth that's coming. Uh, he's already put a lot of wrath on the earth, but the big one is coming. Also, we pulled back the curtain that Isaiah uh, pulls back of the cosmic warfare, but now we're looking at justice. How does God and when does God respond to national sins? Have you ever thought about that? How long will God let someone do bad stuff, bad stuff, bad stuff? Now, Jesus addressed this personally. Do you remember he said when Peter said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my, my brother? Three times? And the Lord said, no, 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 no. Seventy times seven. Now that shows how, how merciful the Lord is. Now you understand the difference between mercy and grace, right? You've covered that. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve. Grace is when we do get what we don't deserve. It's an amazing interplay there. Of, and both of them have to do with God's justice. God's justice is no sin goes unpunished. Now look, aren't these a bunch of familiar names? Look, look at these national people group names I've listed up. These are who we're going to cover. See, we're covering Isaiah 15 to 23, 28 to 35. You say, well, what are we leaving out? Well, right there, we covered uh, Isaiah uh, 24 to 27, the little apocalypse in 13 about Babylon. Then we paused with Lucifer, but now we're going back to that whole spread. And here it is. It's a collection of nations that God dealt with. And it, it's fascinating as, as we go through them. So the context is this. 
We're living the perfect peace life, Isaiah 26, 3, in the midst of a crumbling world, and a crumbling world is a world that has sins that are piling up. In this slide, uh, I, I gave you two references. Do you guys know Galatians 6, be not deceived, God is not mocked. What does that say? Whatsoever a person, yeah, sows they'll also reap. Yeah, it's called the Galatians 6 is the sowing right here, the sowing and reaping verse. And God says, whatever you're sowing, you're going to reap. Now, I watched uh, when we were driving yesterday, they're planting something here. Uh, they're always planting something on Jeju, but they were really planting something yesterday. And they were, uh, all of them had these round tubs and these, they just look like green uh, sticks or something, little tiny things. And they were putting them in the ground. Whatever they're sowing, they're going to reap. That's what Galatians 6 says. You know what Hosea 8 says? Israel sowed to the wind and reaped a whirlwind. You know what that means? It's like throwing dust in the air and the wind blows it back at you and it's worse. Now, that's happening. If today's New York Times article is about valley fever. You ever heard of valley fever? I'm not talking about the people in California that have the valley fever and they want to be a movie star. I'm talking about an actual fungus that grows in people's lungs from dust in dry places. It's terrible. You ever seen a dust storm where the wind blows through and it blows a cloud of dust? When you breathe that in, in the dust are little spores of a fungus, you know, of fungi. Uh, the, one of the largest living things on our planet are all these mushrooms and, and lichens and all this. They're all related to each other. Well, they sporulate. They puff out puffs of little tiny spores. They just get in the soil. And when the wind blows the soil up into a dust storm, people breathe it in and they start having this, it's Right now, it's called valley fever because it's usually in agricultural valleys that are dry and dusty and it blows through. But what the Lord says is, when you sow to the wind, when you throw something in the wind, it comes back to you in a whirlwind. So that, this whole seventh class is about the death of a nation. What nation is it? What nation is the book of Isaiah about? Israel. The whole thing is about why the people that God rescued out of Egypt do you realize Egypt, when God rescued them, was at their zenith? They were the most powerful nation in the world of all. And God went in and destroyed their army. How did he destroy their army? Drowned them when they came in to the crossing of the Red Sea. God, before he drowned them, what did he do to their chariots? Do you remember? He pulled their wheels off. I mean, it was, how would you like God fighting for you? I mean, there is nothing that could stand against him. When all the nations came, God would send hailstones down. Whatever it took, uh, God protected Israel. He wanted them to be his people. But look what happens to him. The death of the nation. Why? Because God's justice, he will let no sin go unpunished. He's very patient, which means he waits and waits and waits and waits. But his wrath builds up. 